Bob, Longevity Learning Lab. This is part two of our motorized turntable here. Uh, getting ready, we've got a, our table base cut, and then we got our, our uh, hub and our axle welded together here. What we're gonna do now is set the sprocket, and we're gonna make a little fixture for it so when, it, it, when I weld it on, it'll be, ni it'll be nice and parallel, it'll be nice and plumb. And, uh, but I'll show you on our, um, our little chalkboard here how we're going to mount it on the table, okay? And it's, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here, but uh, I'll show you what, what I've got going on. And uh, yeah, we we'll move some stuff around, make some room, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a little quick summary of what I'm going to do here. And uh, what it is with that sprocket and the turntable here, we're gonna go ahead and figure out how I wanna put it on the, on the tabletop. This table is one of those kind of tables like you would get at the Home Depot, Sears, stuff like that. It's one of those folding kind of like uh, work tables that you can buy from Black & Decker. And uh, it's got the legs and everything will, will fold up. And that's what I like about it. And if I look for a bird's eye view of it, okay, you've got, here's your table looking straight down, right? Well, you've got those two pieces of wood that act as a vise, right? And then you've got your little, little handles for, for tightening it up, right? And it go back and forth. Well, in between here is where I want to make our mount for a base unit for the turntable, right? So the turntable will be here so I can take this off and I still can have that table for something else if I want to. And uh, it'll be balanced and the motor will anchor to that part here. I have this going the other direction. It actually should go this way here. And uh, so what we're going to do is decide on how high or how long I want to have that, that shaft for the drive shaft. And we're, we'll cut that off with the plasma. And we'll put the sprocket on. And I'm going to make a little fixture so I make sure that that sprocket is not tilted and, and twisted. It's really easy, you know, just have some blocks underneath it and then you tack it and I'll, we'll weld it up. And that's pretty much where I'm at right now. And so I'm going to get that going on and uh, we'll see how this works. Okay, here's that, that table I was telling you about. Yeah. Now, what I liked about it, and I, uh, me, I find this, dump, not dumpster diving, but pretty darn close. I see something I like, I'll stop and I'll pick it up. but. This is good because you've seen these before and uh, you have the little latches that will unlatch it and it'll, it'll fold up on you. You got the legs here that you can stand it up. What caught my eye about it and got me going with this turntable thing is that it's got a feature that I like because okay, yeah, you've got your, your turntable that will just turn like that, right? Well, what if you wanna have the table go in the opposite directions? Well, I didn't wanna really make anything that goes too extreme and too elaborate, you know, for making on, on the show. So what caught my eye on this was this lever here. If I wanted to, instead of going like this, go at a right angle with it, this thing will come up. And then I can spin it that way. And it's not gonna, I'm not gonna ever have anything too heavy on it, you know, 20 foot long pipe or anything. And if I do, I'm gonna have horses at the other end. So this is gonna be sturdy enough. I'll clean it up and it'll be fine. But I like that. And then with the, the, the tabletop here, I gotta go ahead and cut some more wood or some steel or something. I'll make a top for it. But that's not really what I'm gonna be dealing with here now. I'm gonna show you how to do the sprocket. And uh, with the height of the sprocket, I don't need that much because the motor is gonna be on here also. So it doesn't have to droop down, you know, the, the shaft does not have to go down far at all. It only had maybe a foot at the most, and that's even more than what I probably really need. But that's what I'm, I'm gonna, this is our table right here. And so let me get that sprocket going on, and here we go. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and set this thing. Down the road, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to about 12 inches. And, uh, but first, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna set the sprocket up to be welded. Now, the main thing is you wanna start off Right off the bat, you want to have a flat level surface. Something you can go ahead and that's your zero point. You can just start from there. So what I've done, because of the 
little part of the axle that's going through the hub here it's got to protrude through because I need that I made this little piece here and uh, made sure it's nice and flat here and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it to the table so then this surface will be parallel to the table so I know that's still a good starting point so we'll go ahead it's already I already got that cleaned off and that's at a 90 so we'll go ahead and move this set this down right here that so it doesn't fall off on the table on me clamp that down now I've already checked the table for for the level and so I know that's good so then this do the same thing that's good so when I go ahead and there's a hole there so when I put it on the table and I clamp it down I know this part's going to be level then I'll come back with my square and make sure the, the axle is going to be uh, level so let's go ahead and clamp this down and when I clamp it too I got to make sure I don't put the clamps in, in my own way that'll hold it there for now I'm just curious hey that's pretty good that way I got lucky on that now I'll put another little clamp right here too and let me see here I'm gonna come up about four inches where is my axle here's my axle and that's, that'll come down through here and then I've got another little piece of pipe here because I got a little bit of slop on the sprocket so I'm gonna put that piece of pipe on here first and then we'll set it down and uh, it'll rest so oh, I got lucky with my clamps there too and then we'll just make sure that I've got it level that way and I got it the level that way and uh, you just tack it one side and then you tap it around and it doesn't have to be perfect I mean this is not rocket science and so let me get that going on looking pretty good so far and then I'll go ahead and I'll cut this off with the plasma when I need it I don't think I'm gonna have to go too far and uh, I'm thinking probably a foot yeah I might come up about like that and then I'll snip it off there leave myself a little extra just in case you never know what's going to go on with that tabletop okay okay well here's our sprocket and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this washer on it because this hole's got a little bit of slop on it but then also with this sprocket you see we got a little bit of rockage going on here so what we want to do is flip it over so it stays so if anything right here in the center that's going to be your high point so when we put this on and we clamp it down that'll just compensate and keep it as straight as we can it'll warp probably a little bit anyway but we're going to keep our heat down as much as I can and uh, we got lucky with this washer because with here that gives me a little a starting point to get that uh, holes the two holes coaxial to make it center up so we got it like that and this is a galvanized washer so I took off a lot of the, the galvanizing um, zinc on there and then we'll clamp it down and then I get my TIG welder and we'll, we'll zap it here and there and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side it gives a little bit more stability and uh, it's not a very thick sprocket anyway it's a bicycle sprocket and so let me clamp this up we'll weld it and then we'll set it up on the uh, axle and we'll keep that all nice and square okay now I've got I'm going to be using our innovator our uh, 255i and I have had it set on the, the plasma but I took that off so now I got it set up on the TIG welder and uh, like I've shown before when I, I did a video on that now it's set on the plasma so I just bring it back over here to the TIG and it's on the DC current and it's at one, 127 that's okay I'll leave it like that and I don't have to mess with anything else I'm on the 2T because I'm using my the stinger knob I'm not using a foot pedal and the high frequency is on the pulse is off I'm on the DC my current's good to go and so now I'm going to TIG weld it now I've already got it tacked up on the other side so let me just finish this other little bead right here and it'll be done you want to make sure you keep it clamped up too 
And I had a little bit of galvanizing pop up on me, but we'll be okay. Yeah, see that galvanizing popped up on me a little bit right there too. Always remember, you gotta keep a lot of that the zinc oxide off of there. And then we'll let it cool down. We'll make sure to keep it nice and flat. And uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll weld it, we'll flip it over and we'll get on the inside. And that's our sprocket. Now we gotta put it on the shaft. Okay, now we got our sprocket, right? And then if you look, if you can really see, I was really good with that washer. I got that nice and centered, really good. So then what I'm going to do, because you got that little gap right there, I'm going to flip that over so it'll go over this mound a little better. So it'll go fit right like that. So when I flip over and weld the other side, it's closer and get a better, a better bead on it. So now we know that our, our um, axle is square. So now we got to find this, how square this is going to be. So all we do is just set this on there, make sure that's level. And then we'll do the same thing and level that way. So we'll go ahead and we'll sit it there and we'll get a tack on it. Let me get my stinger, get something on there so it'll hold it. You can use little magnets too, I like that. There you go, that'll hold me there for a second. You get a bead on it. Now I might have to turn my machine up a little bit. I have to turn my machine up a little bit. There we go. And maybe a little bit hotter. That's all the heat goes into the shaft right there. Well, we tap that around a little bit. That was pretty close. You gotta remember too, when you, you weld it, it's gonna pull. You wanna keep it as close as you can. We'll get another one on here. And we're good that way. And pretty good that way. I like it. You tap it a little bit more. Yeah, then I'll put another tack there and then before I weld this side, I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing on the underneath. And like I said, it's not rocket science. And you get the drift of it. And that'll hold it so I can unclamp this now and then I'll flip it over. That'll hold it just out a little bit. Oop. Maybe not, not right there. Uh -huh. There we go. You get another block. Just to hold it for me. And then I can run the bead up in through there and that'll hold it. And that's your, what your sprocket's gonna look like. Well, okay, now I got this welded up and uh, it came out nice, I like that. So we'll hook it up to our hub, or our, our um, table, our old rim, and then uh, we'll get ready to make the base for it and that'll be on our next episode. So uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Rob, and we'll see you next time on Longevity Learning Lab.